Welcome to The Wellbeing Room. Today, I am deeply honored to have with me Sensei Ken McLean, who is the founder of the Shinsen Dojo located in Kensington in Sydney. His dojo is a training center for the development of mind, body, and spirit. And here he teaches the Shinsen arts of Aikido, Ki energy cultivation, Aiki macrobiotics, and Ki Shiatsu. He has spent over four decades training and researching these key based arts and has trained with leading instructors in Japan and Australia. As the most experienced macrobiotic counselor and Ki Shiatsu therapist in Australia, Ken has treated thousands of people and in doing so has helped them on the path to recovering their deep health. I had the privilege of studying with Sensei in the early 2000s, learning macrobiotic counseling and Ki Shiatsu and have felt the healing energy that Ki Shiatsu treatments bring. Ken is also the author. His book, Harmony is Success, which I have here, explores the principles behind creating harmony with the four essential relationships in life. And we're going to hopefully touch on that in our conversation today. Like I said at the start, I'm deeply honored that he is joining us in the wellbeing room today. Welcome, Sensei. Thank you very much, Leia. <laughs> Great to have you here. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's lovely to have you in the room today. Now, I thought we'd just dive straight in. I hope that's okay with you. I've got a few oh, questions I've prepared. Best way to do it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just like jumping in the ocean, eh? <laughs> mm. So I'd like to start with this question. So as someone who is deeply connected to key, and right. what is key and <clears throat> what compelled you to explore this path and make it your life's work? Since now I just... Uh, yeah, key, what is key? Key is a Japanese word similar to the Chinese word shi or in Indian prana just to describe the life force that exists in all things and, uh, you know, the moving energy of the universe. And uh, in Oriental medicine, we talk about moving the key through the meridians and, and uh, when our life force is strong, we have we experience it as health and vitality and joy. And when our life force key becomes stagnant, then we can you know, develop illness or lower emotional health and so on. Mm. Uh, how did I get interested in key? Uh, I guess it started with um, dropping out of school at 15 and living in a forest for three years and uh, up the north coast of New South Wales and looking into things like yoga and, and natural diet, living in nature, and just one thing led to another, and I started to develop an interest in uh, things like Aikido. And, uh, the, yeah, and the thing that most, the word Aikido means way of harmonising key. Mm. So it's a central character or central tenant. And, uh, yeah, so basically... The, the arts that you mentioned are all based on that principle of uh, harmonising our key. In Aikido, it's done through movement and interaction with others, the key of others, and then in key energy cultivation. Uh, we do exercises to cultivate that key through meditation, breathing and movement. And uh, shiatsu is the art of getting someone else's key moving and circulating through the body. Just looking at purely on the key level, we could also look at it on a medical level and other other ways. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the macrobiotic understanding is understanding the food that is most imbued with life force, natural. And since nature is a great expression of nat in uh, the life force without inhibition, um, yeah. So we look at look, eating things in their most natural form to get the most benefit of that key energy. That's a brief. Yeah. 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 No, thank you for that. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, I am intrigued about your story about living in the forest. Was that in like in a shack or with a group of people? How did that sort of Started come off about? In a shack with a group of people. Basically school wasn't working for me and in a city school and competitive sort of sport and stuff. So we, uh, we dropped out for a while because we needed to have space from all of that to discover our Self, mm. uh, I guess that's one of the key principles. I believe that 
is one of the purposes of living is to discover our deepest, most authentic self. And uh, and often we, t- we need to take space from things to, to get that, whether it's in retreats or meditation or in nature. And, yeah, it was with a group of friends, yeah. And, uh, and then eventually we discovered uh, macrobiotics while we were living in the uh, forest. We used to go to the local rubbish tip foraging for wood and we found a book called Euro Sampaku mm. by Georgia Sauer and that sort of, we were, we were vegetarian but we shifted our, our focus a little bit to that understanding of grains and yin and yang and that made a pr- profound difference to us at that time because we're pretty living a pretty quiet, laid-back life. Mm-hmm. Suddenly we, uh, you know, things started to shift for us and we moved back to the city and went into a more full-time study of those things. Mm. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Wow, that would have been quite an experience, I'm sure. Mm. I, I yeah, it was wonderful, that. actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Are you still in contact with some of those people that, that you did that? Little, yeah, some, sometimes I. One of them is, uh, yeah, we all took different paths and mm. and uh, it certainly got our energy moving in the direction that each individual wanted to pursue. One of them is uh, <clears throat> one of the... F- pioneers of the natural foods movement in uh, Australia who developed that company Pure Harvest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's, we, we had a reunion about, I think it must have been 10 years ago or something, eight years yeah. ago. Yeah, well. Up in that place, so it was interesting. Mm, I'm sure a lot of memories came up for you all. <laughs> sure, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Thank you for sharing that. That's lovely. Oh. Um, yeah, so... You mentioned just before that Aikido is the way of harmonizing with key. I think yeah. that's what you said. Um, can be, so- can be, yes, it can be called that, or it can be, it's very, you know, with a lot of those words, I, I, Japanese words or Asian words, they have layered meanings. One, another meaning is harmonizing with the spirit of the universe or, or the way of spritual harmony. But mm. key, yeah, is a component of that word. Yeah. So, I'm curious about that that word Aiki and Aiki. Yeah, yeah. Mm, I, I like how you you know the the harmonizing with the universe. It's mm. quite a, a big concept. Um, mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah. It's sometimes called the bodily realization of oneness. You know, so it's like a practice to embody. Yeah, that that bigger principle. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything you want to share more about, I guess, Aikido? Because that's a big part of what you teach at the dojo yeah. um, and yes. that's a big part of your life. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I guess share a bit about, you know, why mm. Aikido, um, what mm. what are the benefits? And, I mean, I mm. dabbled in Aikido for a very short period of time. I, I was pregnant mm. and mm. when I just started teach, learning, some doing your classes and I had been mm. doing shiatsu yeah. and other stuff with you, but... Um, Mm. But, yeah, so I stopped because I was pregnant and the rolling wasn't doing much good. That's right. But, I mean. You've got enough inner rolling going on. Yeah, exactly. But um, Mm. I guess I'm curious about the way you teach Aikido and, Mm. you know, what it it means to you and why it's so special. Um, Well, when I was younger I was into, uh, yeah, I, I found that it has depths that keep you growing. So. The word Aiki, as, as you may know, is the principle of the flow state. It's the principle of the flow state in action, or which is becoming a, a way of saying it these days or in the zone. So I think the word Aiki, people fall into that when they're doing what they love and what they're good at. There's this sort of state of flow. and But um, I suppose Aikido is a way of training. To, what interested me is to bring that out in all areas of life. So it's a normal, ordinary experience rather than thing we just stumble upon in moments of, you know, when everything comes together. So there's that bigger view. Um, yeah. And uh, and then also I was, I was quite heavily into yoga when I was younger and uh, and I see the value of yoga. Very, It's a very, you know, deep art, deep practice. And uh, what interested me about Aikido was to take that into interaction. So I like the fact that Aikido is um, an interactive practice mm. and a metaphor for relationship. So that, and that 
comes out in our practice in Shinsen Dojo is that that idea of uh, harmonising and interacting with energy mm. <clears throat> expressed through through human beings. So, so one of the things I love is communication too, because communication to me is one of the high, it's the highest art of interaction. But to do it on an energetic Aikido, um, <clears throat> we're doing it physically. But uh, yeah, it sort of overflows in other things that we do. Mm. See that uh, how to to blend and move with people. Yeah, so those internal principles that embody Aikido uh, create a shift in our being. You know, in terms of simple things like not being tight, tense, and not reacting to things, but staying calm and looking at the the positive in the interaction, even if it's an attacking energy. Mm. On its lowest level, Aikido can be seen as a martial art, but it's um, it's unique in that it's called a non-fighting martial art, the way of not fighting. But it doesn't mean the way of uh, not participating. So sometimes we all have to deal with fairly strong reactive energy, which could be seen as an attack, but not to fight that and move with it and then to create a different outcome where we, we talk about making creating win-win outcomes. Mm. However, you know, being a physical person too, it's it's nice to get on the mat and explore that in dynamic, fluid ways. Yeah, mm, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's lots to unpack there. And and you know, as you get older too, you know, you want to stay agile and mm. healthy, and you know, so that aspect of Aikido, because it's based on not doing anything unreasonable, you know, listening to your body and, and not forcing or pushing, but at the same time, there's there is a dynamic, you know, there's the roles that you mentioned and it keeps you agile and fluid. Yeah, so there's a lot, yeah, you could say a lot more. But. Yeah, I guess it's about, well, it's it's a, it's a key practice in that you're physically moving your body and moving your key as a result of that and exactly, you're interacting yeah. with other people's key um, yeah. at the same yeah. time and, yeah, I yeah. guess exploring those boundaries and those interactions on yeah, different levels got, like physical, emotional, yeah. spiritual, all that as well. And exactly, the communication yeah. piece that you share is something that I know you, when I was doing the macrobiotic counselling with you, that was something that came up quite often mm. using those principles in the, in the counselling process in macrobiotics. Yeah. was yeah. essential too. Mm. Exactly, yeah. 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 There's a lot of dimensions to a lot of aspects that meet there. Mm. Yeah. So I'd like to ask you about, the key, the four key principles that um, oh, okay. are a major yep. part of your teachings, and yeah. I was wondering if you could just quickly maybe describe or outline those key principles for our viewers, listeners, um, mm. and mm. maybe put them into some kind of context. You've touched on it, I guess, just through what you've just shared, but maybe go a little bit deeper on how that shows up and how we can, you know, imp- yeah, uh, yeah, I'll talk about those, and if if you. Mm. If there's some aspect you could question me about to bring it out more if I don't quite manage yeah, to. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the four key principles are just uh, what are they? They're principles to bring our mind and body and spirit into a harmony or unity. Mm. So we talk about the first one being uh, centering. And I mean, I see that word coming up a lot now. Sports commentators are using he was centered or she was centered. Um, and that center. We talk about it in the hara, which is the lower abdominal region, and uh, which is a point of balance in our body and equilibrium. So uh, that's why when, we, when people are tense, they say you're ups, or when people are upset, they don't say you're down, set, calm, up. Mm. When you're coming from intuition, they say calm down, you're upset, your energy's too up, calm down. And, uh, and so the, and when people talk about intuition, we talk about gut feeling, and there's a saying: "When ships come in over the calm sea." So, the first, one of the first principles is centering, and mm-hmm. getting in touch with our inner calmness at that area, and eventually it becomes a what would you say? It becomes a deep point of connection with our deeper self, a gateway to our deeper spirit to bring it through our body. Because center isn't; it's not limited to that area. It's mean mm-hmm. bringing our whole to express with our whole being, but it, it becomes a focus point initially. Mm. Related to that is the second principle, which is released 
sometimes called relaxation. We're looking at this last night, actually, in the class. Um, but there's a lot of, um, how do you say, conditioning around the word relax. I don't like to use that word. Well, I still use it but because people are conditioned to think of relax, being relaxed as a flop, pleasant state, but floppy and weak. So when they need energy, they'll often tense or use, we'd say, use strength. Um, look, which is just muscular and physical. We're, we want to, we're looking at this key approach to power. <clears throat> and uh, to bring that out, we've got to open the body up. So we do the second principle is called relax completely, which is a state of releasing all tension, but a, a sense of expansion through the body. And a good metaphor for that is, uh, you know, when you feel the air up in a tyre, it has a fullness. If it's mm-hmm. enough air, it's sort of flaccid and it's not functional. Mm-hmm. So when people think of relaxing, they think of that's, Placid state, and then they go to the other extreme. We call that yang tension, mm-hmm. but the middle place, this balanced place, and that's the fourth principle. We called extending key. We, you know, we often do that exercise called unbendable arm, where we don't know if we can do it in this. Yeah, we're relaxed, and we're directing our energy at our fingers, and and you know, we get someone to bend it, and they can't bend it, and it surprises a lot of people because they f- don't feel the person t- uh, trying to bend their arm. This, there's this effortless power. That all human beings possess, but not necessarily exercise, because they haven't had a meta- uh, hadn't ha- had the experience of feeling it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, and then of course there's the third one we talked about, which we haven't talked about, but we, uh, which is called weight underside, which is about grounding and letting and releasing down and being connected to the earth. Mm. And uh, you say the earth is a human being's strong point of strongest, one of the strongest points of support to be connected to the earth. And when we connect to that earth, we can let go of tension and we can let go of forcefulness and yet still be powerful. Uh, is, that, is that enough? Do you want me to Yeah. <laughs> is it coming across okay? It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, um, I think, yeah, I think everyone could relate to that idea of centering yeah. quite easily. Um, and really they're um they're just like four wheels of a car if one's out you know the car doesn't go well or I often talk about fingers pointing they 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 they're pointing to a state of being they help us get into this place in ourselves mm. they're not the end they're just centering and and so if you're not in the flow they help you get in the flow mm. you reestablish that deep feeling when you you don't have to think about it, but when it's a, it's about maintaining it. So some people, uh, we talked earlier when people are doing what they're meant to do. Like I remember Michael Jackson, or whatever you think of him. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the about when he was on stage, he, he felt who he was. In this mm-hmm. flow. But then after the stage, he said, I, "I can't feel it anymore. You know, I don't know who I am." But it, that's, so there's there's this uh, practice and understanding of not just doing it in one, what we're good at, what comes to us naturally, but also being able to bring that out in simple, ordinary situations and interactions. Mm. So how can people go about doing that then? Like, is there a particular practice or technique or is it just years and years yeah, of these training? Are all practice. Well, these are all practices. No, you, you can start mm. effective immediately. So these are all practices. Those key principles we've just mentioned and talked about are practices you can implement straight away anywhere and they're not restricted so it's a i guess um it's about i mean when we work individually with people we give them the key test mm. the test that we do when to feel when you're in your center for example just using one of them when you're not in your center mm. it becomes a more tangible experience because we're talking about subtlety too we're talking about the subtle energy of mind and spirit which can't be felt mm. So we need, and so once we start to feel what that state feels like, we can start to, we have a reference point and then to act from that and practice anyway. You practice when you drive, when you talk, when you listen, anywhere. Um, but there, are, of course, there are exercises and, and, and training. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so there's, and there's practices like meditation and breathing, exercise and movement. Yeah. 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 I like, I like how you, you explain it. It's, it's kind of, it's being aware, I guess, of those feelings and sensations of what does centeredness feel like? What does, yeah. you know, that yeah. 
expanded yeah. and, and um, yeah. relaxed state feel like that. Yeah. And becoming more aware of, of those feelings so that mm. we can tune into mm. them even more easily. Them and then, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then exercise them in interactions and, mm. and they uh, practice. A daily life practice too, which is what well, well, not everyone that does Aikido, there's many streams of Aikido mm. with the key principles. And not all of them look at it holistic. Some are just physical you know, trained as a martial art. But what interested me was how you can practice anywhere, anytime. But so there's a certain level of that practice where you know life is actually life is the practice. You know? Yes. That's for everyone, really. We're all practicing. Even if we're not using these words, we're all practicing. Mm. Uh, for example, well, if I went into the four relationship, we say the first relationship is one. This was self and uh, self, but we to simplify, we say we have deep self or small self. You know, small self is so, the, or you can say ego. You know, our ego self and our spirit. You can use and but when they are unified, ego is not bad only if it's not makes many mistakes if the ego is not connected to the spirit. The spirit should guide the ego. Mm. A deep self should guide our smaller self. So sometimes we get into trouble when we, we just express from our smaller superficial reactionary self. But centering is a way of helping those two join, you know, and then we act in a more fuller way, more effective way. I think the key thing too is being effective in what we do. Mm. No, that's true. And... Um, <clears throat> So, you know, I mentioned everyone's practising. For example, if someone's practising on their self-esteem, which relates to our deeper self, they're naturally practising these things. Or someone might be practising, uh, you know, meditation, which is a way of connecting to our deeper self. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a lifetime practice. That's kind of why we're here, I guess, in a way, you know, learn along the way. We're not born. Yeah. Enjoy, play and learn. Yeah. I mean, I guess we are born with some inherent understanding of these principles, but oh, well, yeah. our Absolutely. conditioning over our, you know, childhood sort of either pulls us away from that or takes us in different directions. So it's about as we get yeah. older, reconnecting with that perhaps through these practices. Absolutely. I mean, I think, yeah, as human beings, we're all similar. So we're all on a similar journey, but we're, we also have our unique way of expressing that. But mm. although we see that this is, this deeper connection is the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. You know, mm. it's eternal, if I may say so. And so we can go deeper and make it more enjoyable. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's right. So uh, you just touched on one of the four relationships in mm. what you just said. So I was wondering if you could maybe just share a bit about what those four relationships are, um, you mm. go into quite detail in your book. So if, if people listening or watching mm. want to learn mm. more, then they can obviously get a copy of your book and have a read mm. Um, mm. or even mm. if they're in Sydney, visit one of your classes and, and learn more there. Sure. But, yeah, I'd be interested for you to share a bit about those four relationships and how they relate to the key principles and yeah, yeah how okay. we can understand our key through those relationships. Yeah, so uh, we mentioned the first relationship with self, because wherever we go, we'll still be there. Everything else comes and goes in that, you know, all relationships are not eternal. Although, in other words, you know, as you know, go through life, we have the thing that, so we have to be most comfortable with ourselves first and happy in it. So that's called first relationship. We related to key principle relates to centering and alignment. There's various practices and challenges related to that, which will go in, in the book I'm, you mentioned. The second relationship is called the uh, oneness or harmony in relationship. So um, it's about then the practice in the, you know with humans with people and uh, and uh, and then the third relationship is called place or nature. The bigger view is nature, but it's connecting to where we are. And the key principle is related is the connection of ground. Each relationship has different layers, you know. Mm. But with um, when we talk about harmony with relationship, it starts with the thing closest to us, partner, if we have, and then you know expands out from there. We have family, we have community, you know, it gets bigger, and then we have all the human beings, right? Mm. And even though we have people very close to us, intimate relationships, if we don't have a personal practice, it can it can be uh, less smooth, you know. 
my if we have, for example, depend on them to be a certain way to make us happy, or if we uh, get upset easily, or we have expectations. That's why the first relationship center is called having prior place of fulfillment in self. And in other words, first we have to acknowledge our prior place, not this person or this external situation needs to be something for us to be happy. Regardless of what it is, we are happy. Regardless, we're connected to this. So then we can manage the relationship in a lighter way because we're not leaning on it to be anything. Mm. That's very. That's the first thing. You know? And that's like an Aikido, right? The Aikido metaphor is when we're centred and when we're in that state, we can manage this attack, energy coming towards us and re- return it to its centre. Mm. Um. And then the third relationship is like connection to ground and place. Over time, we connect to, and you know, we talked about Earth being a, a strong form of support. You know, and uh, and then the fourth relationship is called, well, the bigger view is called oneness with the universe or harmony with the universe. But how that practically expresses is with that through our work or our, uh, you know, harmony with our true expression. Mm. And then uh, so it's like a cross, you know, and and we talk about getting the the circle even. I, I work with, as you mentioned, we, I do a fair bit of counselling and, and kishiatsu work and recently I've seen a couple of people who have had overworked. They're very successful but they've completely drained themselves because they've given to one. If we break the four relationships relationships into a quadrant, mm. they've given to one quadrant yeah, like a wheel that has a bubble in it, you know, mm. uh, Empty and fullness in Oriental medicine. One organ gets full, one gets empty, and it's a bit like a bubble in the ball. And so their their life loses its uh, nourishing aspect because it's getting stuck, you know, and they become completely drained. So eventually, we recognise this constant circulation of our energy evenly through all areas of our lives, so that we don't get entangled or stopped in one. It's natural to enjoy different things, but life. Circulates, you know. That's a principle called chitin in Aiki, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like a clock, it doesn't get stuck in the set one second. And so it just has this flow. Mm. Like that. And that's another meaning that's quite popular today. Talk about how do you say living in the present moment? Living in the present moment is, and that's one of the things in the slow motion practice. I'm covering mm-hmm. a few subjects. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The slow motion practice, Shinki, the bigger view. There's practical, simple views. We don't always have to talk about big view, but the universe has a motion. You know, there's the, the rotation of the planets around its axis. There's the revolution around the sun, and then there's our, our solar system of a whole does that and then circulates. So there's this motion that constantly circulates. And one of the purposes of practice is to get into this circulating, meditative, present moment flow. But it can be... It doesn't have to be, uh, it can be a very simple and practical experience from of mm. enjoying our work and giving fully to it and then and then the, the energy change in our life relationship and then connecting to place and community and nature. And uh, particularly as one matures in life, gets older, then obviously you want to balance in your life. So then, the, so there's this thing about the four relationships creating. That's why we say harmony is success. In Aikido, we have this word kokyu. When all those four key principles are balanced, the body moves as one unit, and there's a there's this kind of fullness and thing that happens. Rather than if you just used uh, how would you put it, just one aspect of yourself, your strength, you know, mm. it doesn't have the fullness behind it. So when we get this balance, there's this fullness in our in what we do in every part of our life. So mm. word called kokyu. but uh, I know. Bring it down to more specific stuff, please. please yeah. Add. No, I love that. Um, I love that way you've described it. As you know, it's this fullness of of all areas of our life. It's not, you know. Yeah, um, and it's a practice. And- sometimes, you know, sometimes we all lean out of our center mm-hmm. and get caught. But I guess with our practice, we get more sensitive when we're doing that and return to an alignment. And, mm-hmm. it's, and uh, yeah, we start to manage our energy a bit more sensitively and more when we feel it out we can you know it's more quick to to adjust yes yeah 
yeah, it's mm. that awareness of our key, I guess, like, like our energy, yeah. like you said, like when we, key, that, yeah. great, that great example of like reacting or stepping or leaning into something too much, too much, um, and then coming you, out of our center and then having yeah. to recalibrate. Um, yeah. And if we don't recalibrate, then things sort of tend to domino and, and things, they do. Know, life becomes yeah, we a get, mess. We get, yeah, we get entangled. Um, there's an exercise I can't really show on the uh, Zoom meeting, but podcast but there's an exercise where we really in aikido where we really affect someone's balance by leaning back with our key going forward because there's this thing about alignment and when you lean into things you actually get weak you your power diminishes the more you lean into it you know when so that's i often i've been calling it the carefree factor lately okay a part of you that can be carefree in whatever you're doing not just even the smallest point well, this point is your center anyway. So, and then, or or if you can observe your emotion or feeling in in something, this one part that can observe rather than be fully there, then you can manage your key easier. Mm. Leaning back, bringing your alignment back, does not mean pulling key in or non participation. It means you can participate from a deeper place, which is fuller. So, mm. it's the thing about Aikido, I guess, and this key stuff is that. What people like is you can be demonstrated. They can see it in a physical example, you know, where mm, yeah. some, you know, that you lean into a, kind of a, someone's grip. They're gripping you. They're stopping you, and you get weaker because the more you react and the more you strive, the more the resistance happens in the other person. Mm. This effortless thing where you lean back and you move, and they surprisingly you can move a group of people mm. through a relaxed, you know, easy approach. Mm. When you say lean like back, you, so. can I just interrupt? When you say lean back, you're not actually saying leaning back in the opposite direction, though. You're coming more leaning to centre. Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking like, usually you just go to centre, but in the yeah. exercise where you lean back, if I was see if someone holds the wrist there and they stop me, and if I lean to raise it, they're trying to stop me raising the lid. But if I lean back and express forward, oh. move, that's in a particular exercise. Yeah. To get out to keep, you know, to not not to, to lean in as it's more emphasizing that point. Mm, mm-hmm. No, I get that. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. guess, yeah. Could you give us an example, say, like for someone in a work situation, for instance, say they're mm-hmm. you know getting drawn into something, and how how could they then use this key principles as a way of recentering and and not getting overwhelmed, perhaps, or um, drawn into something that they don't necessarily need to. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I guess it's easy to describe specifics. However, um, um, if someone's too entangled in something, they probably need to um, take some time off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean by that. It doesn't have, to be, doesn't have to be days or weeks. <laughs> Mm. This means get into a carefree state. When ships come in over the carefree sea, uh, well, you know, without going into describing the practice practices that they need to do, you know, to, mm. and to re-enter with, uh, well, there are exercises, spiritual exercises. You know, there's the exercise of shooting the bar- arrow of key, mm. you know, um, which is a way of let- releasing energy in our body tension in our body uh, through through forgiveness, through sending our energy into a situation in a different way. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there are, there are exercises to release entanglement in our body and, and to send our key into a situation. Mm. It can be done with words too. It can be you know, just resetting and apologising or something or, or going up to someone and saying, look, I, I've been caught up and I'm sorry I might have said this and that. And uh, so there's practical things you can do. And that, uh, you know, I've, I often, I've mentioned that in the past, I've mentioned the woman who came to me for a shiatsu treatment and hadn't spoken to her. This is probably going a bit further than the work situation, but... Her father for four years, he was in England, and we said, right. I said, right, this would got to send the arrow off key. 
that sit down and we kneeled in the seiza, which is a Japanese word for kneeling. We held the spiritual bow. We breathed into the center, the big breath. The center. Center, rec- center is acknowledging the will, you know, most effective will or universal will. If the universe, you know, creates, it, it thinks something, it happens. Mm. And aligning with that deepest self, you know, and then we uh, we breathe out and we send the key to the uh, the arrow of key. Energy hits that person in the centre or the situation, lifts it into the sphere of light. Not getting too spiritual, am I? No, this is good. Like then it. you release it like a bubble. Then, you you know, the old saying, let it be and let it, let it be inside is let it go. Turn. We're, we're not doing it. We're not only doing it for the situation person. We don't want to carry that tension. Mm it is in our body because it stops us being in that deepest state of being we've been discussing. Yeah. Anyway, I did I got did that with that lady and uh, I didn't see her for a little while and then when she said, ah, oh, by the way, my uh, father rang me that night. He, she didn't ask him. And we it was like the four years never happened, you know, like this original thing. So, yeah, our power, our power as human beings is can be immediate and, and uh, mm. yeah. in terms of Shifting a situation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. For At least we can shift what's inside us. So it doesn't matter about. Yes. What. Yeah. We can get to that non disturbed, happy, in, in, you know, carefree joy inside. Mm, yeah. What and that, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you. Mm. Thank you for that example. Um, mm. Very nice illustration of that. Same too. I was talking to someone yesterday about this that they were, a friend didn't want to see them. That she's this is just a woman very entangled with. Well, a little bit. She's an over caring person, very nice, wonderful person, very caring. And uh, she said, I should contact him because he doesn't want to be seen, he doesn't want to see anyone. I, was, I said, I quoted the Aikido saying, When people come to us, we welcome them warmly. When they pull about, pull back, send them out, don't chase. Mm. You need that time. And that's the more attractive force. The person will come back quicker. Mm. There, you know, if they're wanting to pull back. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Thank mm. you. Lovely. Um, I do want to touch on something else that I know you practice, and that is your practices in the ocean and water. Um, oh, right. They're very popular can- now, aren't they? Have you seen how popular cold water is now? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I I've asked for where we are. Yeah, yeah, I've done a few myself and I do cold showers every morning anyway. Mm. Um, mm. But, yeah, I know you spend a lot of time in the ocean and by the water, so mm. as a surfer yourself. And I'm just wondering um, what is it about water for you, mm. that, you mm. that you find beneficial and how do the practices that you do, like things like misogi, and, and people probably listening may not know what misogi is, so maybe you might want to mention right. what that is too, but... Mm. How do those practices around water, mm. in water, affect our key? Okay, yeah. I was, um, well, yeah, well, my, where I live in Bronte Beach, Sydney, I've, and I, I've been, pra- you know, I wrote that book for relationships, but it's really a practice that I'm, my practice really, and uh, as, I get, as I'm getting older and it's becoming more, how do you say, more consistent in that so I, I try and spend an hour or two at Bronte Beach every day mm. in personal practice, not to fill up the schedule completely, you know, and and it's my practice of connecting to I said the third relationship from the four relationships was harmonizing with place. First mm. is place. Our first relationship with uh is ground, where we're standing. You know, there's an old affirmation. Heaven is where I'm standing. So the first one is ground, but then, then there's place like home. You know, this is the third relationship, and then there's it flows into community, nature. Chizen is the Japanese word, great nature, deep nature. So my practice is to spend every day doing that, and I may surf, or if there's no, if the surf, if I'm not feeling like surfing, you know, I'm around the beach, and we have this, you know, have you been to Bronny? You've been to Bronny, and there's all these little huts. Have you seen where people do their picnics and things? Oh, God, I haven't been there for yeah, years. So I'm- yeah, there's a community hut where everyone turns up and we've all got different views. There's scientists, mathematicians and garbage guys and me and and there's an interesting spirit of discussion, so that's another part. So it's nice to connect to that community. And, yeah, going into the 
part of everyone's practice is water, going in the water and the surf. And uh, But the Masogi thing was developed quite a long time ago about when well, my father introduced me to cold showers. But then, uh, as you know, over the years, I've led many people to meditate in cold pools in the Blue Mountains to meditate and uh, also under waterfalls. And so it's interesting for me now to see how popular it's becoming because it hasn't been popular for a long time. Mm-hmm. That guy, what's his name? Wim Hof? Wim Hof, yes. His Wim method Hof. has become popular. So we have been doing it for over 40 years and uh, the benefits, uh, I mean, obviously cold water does is constricts all the blood vessels in it, so it's a very yangizing. We talk about yangizing. We have this word masubi, which is gather in Aikido macrobiotics, gathering, centering where you feel more connected and also the training of your mind to, to sit in cold water You've got to extend your key. We talked, you know, you've got to extend key to get in there first. Mm. Calm yourself, otherwise you go like this. So uh, it's often been used as a practice for that type of stuff. Um, There's also the medical energetic sign. You know, I remember uh, there's this fine capillaries that don't really open up unless the, the cold, when the cold, when you go in cold water, the the normal capillaries restrict, and these other tinier, finer ones, I think the word is globus, they exercise, they open and circulate. And the, mo- and the finer we go in the bloodstream, we're getting closer to the nervous system. And so there's this uh, deeper effect on our nervous system. I know, I know in Buddhist yoga back in the day they used to use it to develop their psychic ability, right, because it's exercising of the nervous system. Um yeah, I'm not going up the mountains as much as I used to, but uh, yeah, I go in the ocean in Bronte. Mm. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, I don't, as I get, as I'm evolving my own practice, I don't, you know, at certain ages I think uh, it's a good practice, but I don't think anyone should, I don't I do extreme practice too much. Mm. I like low practice. Having said that, you know, because as people get older, older people, like, Towards 70 and that too much cold can, you know, chill the kidney. So you want to nourish your kidney energy. Mm. But, but, yeah, there are certain benefits. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I noticed I used to swim a lot when I was younger, like right. teens, 20s, mm. just at the local pool in Manly. And, mm. um, yeah, I found going swimming now in my 40s, I, I don't, I feel the cold a lot more strongly, I think, yes. um, yeah. than I did when I was younger. So I actually don't swim outdoors much anymore. I'd love going to the beach and going swimming in the ocean, yeah. but I start yeah. swimming laps regularly. And I don't yeah. like indoor heated pools, so I just don't go there because the key there is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah chlorinated water. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, you know, I, I think yeah, as I get older too and, and more, uh, I don't think extreme. It's not that necessary to do, I think. Mm. I, popular now and I've done it. Still do it. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's not that necessary, you know, extreme practice. It's more, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, we've talked about a lot and there's yeah. a lot of really great information there for people. I just was wondering if there's anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners and viewers before we wrap up today's discussion. Uh not in particular, unless you have a question. I've just been enjoyable to talk to you. And um, yeah. uh, good to see you doing the podcast. And- Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think I'll just share quickly. I mean, I, I really just want to express gratitude to you as a teacher <laughs> of these arts. I find that mm. um, having trained with you for, for a number of years back in Sydney really mm. helped me discover what's what's important in my life and, and um, you know, on your website you have written here, I've just got the notes here, it says that, you know, that all Aiki trainings at Shinsen have the effect of creating momentum and bringing out one's deepest desire and passion. The work that one really wants to do is meant to do and to make that a living reality. And I feel like, um, you know, it's it's been a few years since I, I trained with you, but I think mm. that really helped me develop that deeper connection to myself and has helped mm. me on this trajectory of where I am mm. now, you know, doing what I'm loving doing. And I feel that, mm. that, yeah, mm. that's, yeah, it's a wonderful um, mm. 
thing to have to have you know to be able to express mm. myself fully right. more fully yeah. than i have in the past and yeah find yes. my my path so thank you for your your guidance mm. and your wisdom on that journey oh my pleasure it's good to see you expressing that who you are fully yeah mm. thank you sensei all right. Well, I will put some information in the show notes um, of this podcast and on YouTube for how to get in touch with Sensei, how to um, find you. his mm. book, and perhaps go to one of his classes in Sydney if you're a local or mm. visiting um, Sydney. Mm, sure. So, nice yeah, the dojo, yeah, the dojo is an amazing space. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but it's kind of you walk in and you're almost transformed into a a lovely mm. big open space with tatami mats and wall mm. hangings mm. and yeah there's a certain energy about the dojo that mm. Mm. you can't mm. help but notice when you walk in the door mm. so yeah beautiful place mm. to practice mm. Mm. thank you yeah all right sensei thank you so much for joining yeah. us in the well-being room oh thank you it's been my pleasure and thank you for having me <laughs>